The storyteller made herself comfortable. <coughs> Quiet, attentive crowd. No chattering or clinking of pint glasses tonight, she thought. She smiled and nodded as a means of a hello and looked around the room. Although with a particularly bright spotlight on her, she couldn't see beyond her own little circle of light. <sighs> she was a little out of breath, so was happy to take a minute before she started. That was the fault of the weird guy who had booked her. He had been waiting in front of the venue for her and then, rather unnecessarily, she thought, hurtled her through the old town's cobbled lanes and claustrophobic closes, darting down unfamiliar dark passages at a dizzying pace until he bundled her through the back door and practically pushed her onto the stage. He had approached her the previous night at her usual weekly gig, dressed head to toe in black, pale skin, poor complexion, dark shadows under his eyes. She could tell he worked in the arts. <laughs> However, not only had he enthusiastically booked her, despite her audience consisting of two nervous-looking poets who were only there because they were on after her, and a solitary Finnish backpacker who was only there for the free Wi-Fi, but uh, he had also paid her up front, and it was a lot. She took the money casually, as if it wasn't a massively unusual freak occurrence that would transform her entire month. His only request, being a Halloween theme, was that she tell a ghost story. And maybe learn a few, yeah? He added. Aye, right, pal. You do your wee booking bit. Let the talent do their bit. Which came out as, yes, of course, no problem at all. And so here she was. Bit hot, bit breathless, but ready. And so she began. This was her at her happiest and most alive, in full flow, right in the midst of a twisting tall tale. Tonight, she told a beguiling story of a lonely widower who saved the life of a stranded starfish and was rewarded by a late night visit from a creature that was at once both his dead wife and a tentacled writhing sea monster. <laughs> it was, for a ghost story, a bit rude at points. A little too rich for my palate, dear, as her mother would have said if she was there, although she never was. But the storyteller was pretty chuffed with it, and her audience clearly was too. You could have heard a pin drop in the darkness. So when she finished, she was more than a little surprised to hear, well, nothing. Not a solitary clap, no embarrassed cough, not a tisk, titter or sigh, just... Nothing. She tried a lame joke or two. Gobsmacked, eh? It's okay, I get that a lot. And, uh, wait, you, you've not dozed off, have you? I get that a lot too. Nothing. She shielded her eyes from the spotlight and peered into the dark. Uh, seriously, hello? There was a rustling, a shuffling of many feet, a stirring of many bodies, and finally, a voice. Just the one voice, but made up of many, many voices. Ancient, dusty voices. It did not speak out loud. She heard it only inside her head. One whispered word. Urgent and demanding. More. She hopped down off her stool. She had never wanted to run and scream so badly in her life. But something about that voice made her want to keep very calm and very still and not upset it. She backed away slowly. 
As she reached the edge of her circle of light, she could sense movement all around her, just out of sight, just out of the light. It felt like a jostling crowd was right beside her, right behind her, right above her. There was no way she was stepping out into the darkness, into that. And the voice was swirling everywhere. More! It was louder now, angrier, closer. Her circle, her safe place, shrank. Just by a few inches, but enough for her to notice. She quickly sat down again and closed her eyes tightly. More. She could do more. After years of honing her craft, she knew she had a deep well to draw on. She had made her sort of living uh, from telling countless folk tales, hadn't she? Hoovered up myths and legends since she could pick up a book. Committed to memory the names of hundreds of mythical beasties from every part of Scotland. Whatever lay beyond the circle wanted more ghost stories. She had them. She started slowly, but was soon seamlessly weaving together all her old stories with new ghostly twists. And when she finished them, she began expertly, effortlessly, crafting new supernatural sagas. Or, And on she went. She plundered and raided every corner of her mind. Classic period romances from her adolescence became chilling tales involving bloodthirsty ghouls. Heroes from childhood novels became vengeful phantoms and unescapable apparitions. Shaggy dog stories from her act, previously riotously funny, now featured the unsettled, unrelenting, undead. She retold the plots of every scary movie she could ever remember. Every Twilight Zone and Tales of the Unexpected she had sat through as a child, utterly transfixed and completely terrified, she now brought back to life. She sweated and toiled as she desperately searched for more. And every time she faltered, the circle of light grew smaller and the voice grew more impatient. More! All those Saturday afternoons watching her stupid ex-boyfriend's Hammer House of Horror DVDs, the house that bled to death, visitors from the grave, grisly urban myths she'd heard in pubs, old newspaper stories she'd read about, real-life haunted houses and poltergeists. On and on she went. She lost track of time. Until eventually her voice cracked and she knew the well was dry. Oh. She slumped off the stool and fell to her knees. I don't know anymore. I'm sorry, she sobbed quietly. That's all the stories I have. The voice was silent. The circle of light quickly shrunk around her until it disappeared and she was alone in the darkness. In the wings, the man in black wearily hauled himself out from his chair. The scream when it came was mercifully short. He'd heard some right bad ones, ones that would have given him sleepless nights if he had ever slept in his life. He flicked a switch and the house lights came on. The storyteller slowly opened her eyes and looked around the empty auditorium. Bewildered and wiping tears and snot from her face, she unsteadily got to her feet. The man in black pulled on his black coat. So, yeah, we're doing another one at Christmas, if you fancy it. I don't think you'd have to go on as long as that, though. That was a bit, well, you know. But pretty good, though. I'll be in touch, yeah? He turned and headed out into the dawning light to do his master's bidding once again. He'd read good things about a guy in the Cowgate doing a one-man show on Nosferatu. Probably good for a few stories, he reckoned.